When it comes to the market of corals here in Arkansas, as you may know, it's not very big. It has been one of my biggest goals to bring a lot more exposure to the reef and hobby here in Arkansas. And I cannot do that without introducing you guys to my guy, Chad Chapman. But first your boy have to stop and get some of that good old Popeyes cause you know, I stay hungry. But let's get back to it. Some of you guys may know Chad Chapman from Reef to Reef as that's where he mainly sells his corals. And some of you, this might be your first meet. But all in all, Chad Chapman is a great hobbyist and he bleeds in the agriculture of corals and not buying anything from the wild. So what inspired you to start? Uh, it's actually funny, I had no interest in fish at all. One of my friends, he got an apartment, the guy had a fish tank in there with uh, two anemones and a clownfish. He's like, well, I'm gonna keep the tank and everything else is going in the toilet. So I had some anemones in a bucket and then I had to go buy a tank, buy salt, and learn how to set up a tank that day. Okay, so I think it's funny, a lot of people in the hobby now say you can't set have an anemone in a tank without established old tank, that's not true. I've had an enemy living in a bucket with, while well, I was tank shopping. It lived and grew into what I do now. But it's, it was an adventure that way. Hey. And then, that, then I just got into it from there. It was, I had no interest in fish and now it's most of what I do. It's cool, yeah. And then with you being like one of the, the most premier uh, Coral seller in Arkansas, you know, I, I know that you have to, because the market here in Arkansas really ain't that big. You have to, you really have to get more, most of your stuff sold online. So, how how's the process? How's that process? Of right, yeah, most of everything I do is on reef to reef. Um, I will venture out to some other places for the most part, but I prefer reef to reef. It's a really good forum, good community, and I would rather stay there where the most of the people there are pretty good hobbyists that are just looking to keep sustaining the, the hobby. Okay. But well, I know when I go on the forum on Reef to Reef, and one of the main questions that people ask you is how you get the, the lashes on your zoanthids to uh, extend as far as they do. I still haven't figured out what I do. I think it's just the flow that I'm using. And I go a fairly strong flow, but not direct. And they, they seem to just grow really long. I do dose a lot of iodine, which that might also be contributing to it. But I. I haven't figured out what it is for sure yet, but I'm gonna go with it because people like it. Yeah. <laughs> in your opinion, what's what's the feature on coral farming and the reservation of you know coral reefs out in the wild? I think coral farming is gonna be the premier supply of coral going into the aquarium hobby. There's more and more regulations as to what can come out of the ocean. They are limiting more of the city's permits coming from some of the collection stations, but. A lot of the collection stations are actually doing mariculture, which is farmed in the ocean, but still you have a lot of production costs, you have a lot of transportation costs, and everything that's raised in an aquarium is hardier because it's used to an aquarium environment, and if you know more people can grow it, it's just as lessening the impact on the environment. If, I think in a few years, more and more people will be putting corals back into the ocean to replenish the reef. So with you being a coral farmer, that means you have to uh, actually frag your own corals. So what's what's the whole process on uh, fragging a coral and uh, having to heal up to be ready for selling? Uh, when I frag them out, I get something, I wait for it to probably double in size, and then I'll, I'll cut it depending how big it is to how I cut it. Uh, once I do, I leave it right where it was in that same area to heal for about a week or so, and then I'll move it somewhere else if I decide to. But um, I like to keep it in the same, even if it's the same water, I, I want to keep it in the same par levels and the same light and flow that it originally was doing on. Then I'll, then I'll move it and let it grow and heal before I even list it for sale. Some people will go maybe a week or so. I like to keep stuff for about a month before I would even think about selling it. And that's, that's real good because uh, I know a lot of a lot of coral sellers are not thinking about the customer when it comes to uh, you know selling these crabs because uh, you don't want your customer to go home and you know they, they, their coral is dying on them from uh, you know damage from cutting and something like that. So right. I really respect it, and you always been every coral I got from you has it's still alive today. So 
Yeah, I really respect how you do your, your you run your business. I believe the longer you wait, the better it's healed. Uh, I'll, sometimes I'll wait for them to actually start to grow yeah. and thrive before I'll sell them. Honestly, if you made it to this point in the video, you are considered a super fan and the best way you can support the channel as a super fan is leaving a like and a comment on this video. And subscribe if you haven't already. On this channel, we talk about all things reef tank related, corals, fish, everything you want to talk about. So just make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and join the family. Let's get it. So also, what kind of what kind of gear you got on the tank to explain like the gear that you're running to keep these corals, you know, so fresh and so clean? Mm -hmm. Um, I'm for filtration. I use just live rock and uh, skimming. I uh, don't want to go really too clean with it. I don't like to run carbon or too much. Um, I try to keep it as basic and as close to natural as you can. Lights um, on the shallower tank. I use Kessels. On the other one that I use LEDs on, I'm using Black Box on. I think Black Box actually produces some of the best growth for LEDs without burning them. Um, the other tank I am using just T5 right now. I have a T5 metal halide set up, but I was pushing, I think, too much power and bleaching out it. Bleaching? So I took the halides out of the equation to see if the color would come back. Okay. Yeah, so with you being one of the first coral sellers that I ever met uh, I remember coming to you with this question like what was the best starter corals to you know to start a tank with for somebody new in this hobby um, a lot of your soft corals your your mushrooms your zoanthids uh, palethoas but you have to be careful with those because they can grow out of control um, yeah so something like toadstools leather corals the zinnias zoanthids um, LPS are also good, so like some of your favias are pretty hardy. Um, candy canes are real hardy. And yeah, just more of your soft corals. Something like star polyps and pipe organs also are very good starter corals. So thanks, Chad, for uh, having me over and uh, you know checking out your form. You know this ain't my first time here, and I always every time I come here, I feel like I'm at the candy store. But yeah, I just want to say thank you, man, for letting me. Yeah, Come absolutely. Over. Yeah, thanks for coming out. And, and guys, if y'all want to buy cores from Chad Chapman, make sure you go on Reef to Reef and type his name up in the search bar, and all this listing should pop up right there.